And welcome back, everyone, to Kingwin Pro League 2015, first season. Obviously, we're just done with the second match of the evening. Uh, two near blowouts at this point. We yeah, have uh, four one and four zero. Oh. Yeah, that's as fast as it's gonna go for players of this caliber. It's kind of un unusual. Yeah, I didn't anticipate that at all. No, like, neither did I. I was looking forward to four three four three match. Yeah, I was. I was thinking maybe we're gonna get a lot of you know near reverse sweeps possibly, um, at the very least. Or like one win, the other one wins one, and then we're just escalating to 3-3, mm -hmm. and then the last one gets the, the win. But it was way too quick, and I wonder if that has to do with the deck choices uh, more so than anything, but I I'm not too sure. The metagame is still very dynamic at the moment. I was thinking about it, but I, I feel like the players have still made good choices with their decks. Yeah. Something that like didn't work out exactly that they wanted to. Maybe it's the matchups, maybe it was sometimes the draws, sometimes the de decision-making wasn't as convincing right. as usual for that for that kind of players. So I guess um, like that there were it happens. Uh, there were it a happens. few weird decisions, but we if we knew what was going on in their head, we'd probably understand the line of play they took. Yeah, it's probably, just yeah. like it's so hard to, as a caster to understand exactly what's going on in the player's Especially head. Especially when you have more information than yeah. those players. Yeah, when you have the other hand, you get biased right away uh, yeah. by default. That's true. So but it's now, a bit tricky. We have the first semi-final. Yeah, we're already done like, with the quarterfinals, which was really quick. Kalento moved on, and Sho moved on from the quarterfinals. So the semi-finals will pit Strife Crow versus Kalento first, and then as a second one, we'll have the live coach versus Sho match. Yeah. Uh, you know what? Strife Crow versus Kalento, yeah. I think that's maybe the second time I see them playing against each other. Okay, when did they play last? Dreamhack, uh, Dreamhack. Um, Winter. Which was like... Uh, Which was like last, last year. year, yeah. And they were playing at semi, f no quarterfinals, I think. That was also quarterfinals. That was like really intense. Uh, most of the most complicated um, matches I ever seen between a warrior and fatigue mage. I think I remember that one. The decisions came down to like very specific cards for fatigue plays, right? Yeah, and playing around yeah. mirror entity and stuff. Right, that was, really that was a sick Kalento play, if I remember, that a lot of people realized uh, later on on, yeah. on yeah. Reddit. They were like, Kalento's like God Lento is just so sick of this game. True. Uh, as a result of that specific match. But both players are very high caliber. They're very thoughtful, and you can see when they play. Y you know, sometimes when you see a board and you're like, oh, this is the obvious play and you make it by mm -hmm. habit, yeah. they look at the same board and they take another line of play that pays off two turns later, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. very, very mm -hmm. unusual. And I'd say that's something that do these two players do very often. Yeah, they do plan ahead a really... W I mean, they do plan ahead, every player plans ahead, yeah. but those players are making further plans than the usual players. Yeah. So this is why they're so good. This is why Strife Crow and Colento, Life Coach, Firebat are like the top tier of Hudson scene, I would say. Yeah, they have really good um, planning abilities, it mm -hmm. seems, when they play a game. Like, you'll see them sometimes as Druid ping a minion. Yeah. Like, just take four damage to the yeah. face. They're like, why do they do that? And then two turns later, they get the perfect swipe lined up. And it's just, it's beautiful when you see it. Because um, yeah. you know there's a lot of planning into it. Mm -hmm. So, about the lineups for both players, Strifequin and Kalento, no surprise, both have brought Warlock and Warrior, respectively. Yep. I have to say at this point, I still expect Grim Patron. I would um, say the same. From both yep. players. But the Warlock leaves, you know, I guess there's a bit of uh, leeway there. Both players can play what they want. But, of course, we, we can see Handlock. Wait, did you see Colento's Warlock already? We have um, to see it, right? I think, yeah, I think we did see it. It so was. We, actually, no, he won 4 1 against Firebad. I don't even think we had to. He has to win with everything. He has with everything, yeah. So I think it was mid range warlock <laughs> with multi. -time. Yeah, yeah, it was it was void callers, yeah. Void callers and zoo though. Because he couldn't deal with the void caller that yeah, came out. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. So <laughs> it's a zoo deck, guys. All right, don't too many it. decks for now. There's too many decks in my head. Like Warlock has about 17 archetypes and I've been watching too much Hearthstone to keep up with the meta. So Kalento is playing a zoo deck yeah. with I, I remember the demon, you know, shenanigans that he had. He got mm -hmm. a Doom Guard off the top and well, it was when like, he traded for the Pulse Shutter. Exactly. Yeah. There you go. So we remember that game. We're not <laughs> as coolest as we seem. So Strife Crow <laughs> has Hunter Paladin, Warlock Warrior, and Kalento on the other hand has Druid Priest. Um, I think he was allowed to change between both matches. No, 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 no. Not today. Uh, not today. Not okay. Today. today is like he's stuck with his lineup yeah, no matter we what. We stuck we are stuck with the lineup that uh, So it must feel a bit more like ladder. Yeah, I guess probably. So. Yeah, but the still can prepare for, you know, five other players right. and not 30 millions. Yeah. 
13 million players in Hearthstone. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that's quite a lot, yeah. I would say. So it's basically a limited metagame where you, you have a pocket of very high-quality players that you have to analyze mm -hmm. and figure out what your best bet is against the field. Yeah. And you know how the brackets will work. Yeah. Like, you know that next match, if you win the first match, you play against Drive Coach right. or against Life Coach. And then if you win the semifinal, okay, I'm playing against one of those four, I mean those, those uh, three, so it's very limited when it comes to, uh, to your options. Yeah, you, you know what you're going to get. The thing is, like, Hyped was the wild card. I'd say his lineup was completely out of the blue for the tournament mm -hmm. so far. Mm -hmm. It's like nothing I expected. Um, and it didn't quite work out. I wonder if he'd gone, you know, one stage further, if other people would have been prepared. Because everybody seems to have a similar lineup with Warlock Warrior and whatever else they feel comfortable with. Um, like, Strife Crow bringing Paladin, I think he's the only player who consistently brings Pally to KPL so far. Yeah, that's... Well, uh, Life Coach was also that, that player. There was Life Coach, and I think Savic sometimes, but, like, he was... He was bringing... Yeah, uh, Ebola Ebola yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. Uh, this is probably, like, Hearthstone is probably the only sphere where you can say Ebola Din, and, like, yeah, I'm, like, this is legitimate. <laughs> like, there's no problem. <laughs> so he brought Ebola Din a few times, and I think Control Pally once, but not, uh, not very often. I think when the, the one time when Savic brought the Control Pally and didn't... Quite no, work. not at all. No. Yeah. The follow-up was he bought it in, and that worked pretty effectively the few times he did. So Strife Crawl's Pally, I'm going to guess, is going to be on the mid-range end. Um, he's a very... He generally He was streaming a lot of Paladin lately, even yesterday. Did he try Dragon, like Dragon, Dragon, right? That was, that was a, I don't, ex yeah. don't exactly remember the whole list, but there were some Dragons. Included. I would bet it's got to be very low curve. Like, as bad as it seems to say so, Dragons, they're best played when your curve is lower than your average... Paladin deck um, because it doesn't compete with aggro otherwise. Like, you yeah, get blown out. So, I wonder what he's going to be playing. All right, so the first match from both players is seemingly going to be Warlock versus Warlock, um, yeah. unless I'm mistaken, which uh, means I we think, might see I think you're right. two different uh, archetypes. I'm not sure about that. Like, uh, no. Strife Crow, no. he likes board control um, type of, of decks. Like, he wants, he is so good at trading, right? Kind of like Firebat. Yeah, I think so both players like that. His uh, and his skill is transferred into Zoo deck like instantly. Especially the newer ones where you have even more uh, more complicated like, yeah, trades exactly. and more juggle right. options. Uh, like the Invergang boss made uh, quite a change to the jugglers you yeah. usually see. Then you have the the void colors that can you know trigger all the stuff. It's, it's really interesting that, that that deck is quite powerful. It can win even with slight mis misplays, but when you play it perfectly with those placement, with those juggles being parallel, like, you know, in the unique way, it, 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 it works perfectly most of the time. Yeah, you basically, you can't lose. Once you get a snowball yeah. going, it's even better than the oh, older. look at that! All right, so getting to the game, we see Kalento is playing a mid-range... Wait, is that...? No, it was Zoo earlier. What's Sylvanas doing there? Well, he might just toss it up there. Void Terror. Oh, yeah, then he might... He is playing his double void terror, yeah, maybe double void terror list. Yeah, with it's more situation. of a mid range at that point. Then yeah, there may not be flame imps even. I would say one flame imp is kind of almost seen in every single list. At least one. Yeah, at least okay. one. Yeah, I know Zoo like the very aggressive Zoo always runs two by default. Unless you know, actually, no, 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 no versus face no, no, no. hunter, it's gone now, pretty much. Yeah, but one flame imp is kind of okay. It's like yeah. I was always playing one, even when there was Face Hunter. Well, Strife Crow says, I'm going to be playing two. Well, he goes all in, so that kind of pays off. Like, yeah, when you have like a mirror match, the flame imps are really insane. Good They're thing there's no Soul Fire. Like, you know, the zero mana one. The, the matchup between Zeus was like, I got flame imp and Soul Fire. Yeah, you lose. You lose. Exactly. Whoever yeah. got those first got the biggest tempo swing. Like, the flame imp would deal 9, 12 sometimes to the opponent's face. Yeah. And the Kalento is going to go and play the Knife Juggler as a sacrificial lamb to make sure the Flame Imp doesn't get out of control. What do you think about playing the Egg and going for a gamble that you can get a um, Abusive Sergeant or Dire Wolf next turn? And then you play the Juggler if everything goes wrong, and yeah. you still live a little you, bit. You get like free damage, yeah. but it doesn't really make huge of a deal, Yet, right? Yeah. And, you know, he's flaming big himself, so you take three, he takes three. Mm -hmm, I guess mm -hmm. it works out. And you know what? I don't necessarily disagree with that. I think it's, uh, it could have been a play. Like it's really risky. Yeah. 
if you like, but it, the payout is so great. He may not play Dire Wolf, but I think he may play Abusive. And P I know he I'm plays sure Power Warnings, he plays Abusive. Like Abusive are the best yeah, minions definitely. to play in Zoo. There's no way he doesn't play that. But yeah, you you can be right about the Dire Wolves. Dire and if he doesn't play Dire Wolves, then that play doesn't make any sense. I Suddenly say. the outs of you yeah. get like you have two abuses maybe with the two POs. That's mm -hmm. four cards. Mm -hmm. um, that's not necessarily gonna cut it. It's like a 25% chance. Abusive not even phase so. in this situation. I think you trade. Yeah, I would be afraid of letting a Nitro live in the in the Zoom mirror match. All hmm. right. Well, Kalento now able to play an egg. Double implosion. Now this is awful. For well, whom? This is awful for Stratcrow. Like one okay, implosion. Okay, for Stratcrow, yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I one thought you implosion were, uh, will change the whole board. Yeah, I know. I, I thought you were saying it was bad no, no, for Kalento. Yeah. Okay, I, <laughs> I'm back on track. Um, yeah, I definitely think this is going to be a really big deal in this game. Those implosions will spawn so many 1-1s one that he can use uh, as sacrificial lambs with buff cards or void terrors even if he wants yeah. to. Now we'll see Void Terror. No doubt. No doubt about that. And the Imp Gang boss is not out yet. An excellent implosion. Oh, this is so huge. Everything about this board state seems to indicate that Strife Cross got the lead, but Kalento's hand it, it definitely will improve very this. Very quickly. Yeah. And the Owl is so, so important, yeah. too. Yeah, sometimes it doesn't take much. You get rid of an egg that was about to be popped. You negate an Imgang's boss's ability to get one ones out. Void color uh, ability. Void, yeah, void yeah. color. But I feel like anything, but the m most important part is to silence the egg. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, you know what? If he draws a two drop, he can just ditch the implosion and play the owl just to kill the egg right now. Yeah, to get rid of it before it, to get Defender before of Argus later, or it hatches before with a PO or Abusive yeah. Sergeant. Mm -hmm. I think I like that. Strive for finding another Imp Gang boss. Not too sure that's very useful right now. But now with two eggs on the board, Strive for will find, we'll need to find Why a neighbor. Why would you drop the Imp Gang boss? I'm not sure about that. Uh, maybe he was looking for something else that was very specific. And Strive for giving the opponent the gift of trades. So in this situation, you can't play. Uh, you can't play the, the owl anymore. Owl anymore. Yeah. So you have to implosion. implosion the void walker. I like that. I mean, it's a sixty-six percent chance to work out, and if it doesn't kill it, I guess you're still getting two one ones and killing the void caller. Um, it still feels like the best play. Imp gang boss is probably defendable as well. Wow. Imp gang boss is a great play as well. I think. It's just very vulnerable to power overwhelming. Yeah, that's true. But if it if it dies to power, no, it won't die to a power overwhelming because the PO will be played uh, against the spider. Yeah, the Nerubian. Yeah, the Nerubian. Yeah. yeah. I like him gang boss a lot here. Like it's so easy to get value out of it. And if the Fen of Argus comes out, you've got the owl ready. And then on the other hand, if you get a three or four from the implosion. Then you have such big advantage on the board. Yeah, that you can trade thing. with everything next You're turn. Right. So I, I would say the gamble on implosion is not high enough to not play it. Yeah, sixty-six percent is like it's going to work out, and the wow. payout is just huge most of the time. Oh wow, Kalento does go for the owl. Make sure those eggs will never see the light of the. The egg. one egg. Oh, the one egg. Yeah. Oh, and there's the PO. Strifecrow does find a really good card It makes here, no difference right now, right? Because if there's like an option... Oh, it'll pop out a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, if you silence the egg now, yeah. there's no difference because he would only pop one anyway. Yeah, only pop the one with PO or Defend of Argus both, so that's a problem. So maybe he kept the implosions for lucky fall. For later the, on, for yeah. For the Nurgen. For the 4-4, four, four, so he plays both. Hmm. Strife Crow's board not looking too I bad right now. Do you ever play Egg Void and then kill the Egg on the other side? Feels okay. Yeah. Or do you try to get the Implosion trade? Maybe he kept the Implosion for a Nap Juggler draw. Or Implosion face. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I like that. I do it all the time. I Implosion the face and I execute, but... I guess Imp Gang boss is not bad either. 
it's I, I think it's just too weak to the four four and it spawns a one one that the other NBA boss gets a one one with. So maybe I think Nero would be an egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Is no, no, that would be really stupid. <laughs> I think I, I really like the egg, but I'll have to see what Kalento agrees. <laughs> Uh, agrees egg with. and the Void Terror. Yeah, it seems to be okay. 4-4 four, four and 3-5 and you kill the other Egg, so yeah. there's no Defender. Mm -hmm. I think it's okay. A 3-mana three 3-5, three it's okay. It's the Black Wind Technician without Dragon. Yeah, exactly. And you get a 4-4 four, four out of I it. I mean, without the need for the, the Dragon. Yeah, exactly. You don't have to bother with holding a Dragon. Oh, he can he can uh, eat the Owl too. I forgot about that. Yeah, no no Imps here. Yeah, that, that's even better. 5-6, way better than 3-5. Uh-oh. Never mind. Strife Crow finds the defender of Argus. So that's a really good trade for him right here. Buff both. You trade for the Nerubian with uh, your Nerubian, and then you go face with the Imp Gang boss. Yeah, Kalento is gonna have to find a creative solution with implosions. I think he'll be able to handle it very easily. Like the implosions should be what gets this. It's, it seems pretty straightforward, even with the trade. Because on one health, and Rubian is not going to be a big threat. I right. Well, I guess there's no other play than, do, than Defender Vargas here, right? Yeah. He's trying to think about where to position it, but I don't... Oh, if you put it on the left and you trade in the Rubian, you're forcing the 5-6 to attack into it. But you kind of want to make the Imp Gang boss trade anyway, right? With the 5-6? I don't know. It, it just dies. <laughs> You spawn a, one additional minion, so yeah. it's not so bad. I mean, we'll have to see. Going for this is weak to only implosion and knife juggler hits, which could also hit your imp. We'll see where he does put. He puts it on the left and just goes ahead with a trade and puts his Rubian on one health. Okay. So I guess uh, knife juggler would be a decent draw for Kalento. But Second flame imp. So this is the last amp, uh, last. Flame Imp that we can see, right? Both Kalento's got gone two. No, Strife Core got two. Kalento got only the one, which is this one. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, so Kalento is going to be getting a decent trade uh, with this. No matter what happens, I think he's going to be pretty far ahead after this. It's all about that base. Knife Juggler. So oh. he, he lacks. <laughs> yeah, he, now he's missing <laughs> something. He lacks the implosion now. Yep. No, the implosion now would be so sick. For Stripe Crow, that would be a great draw. Yeah, it can oh. do it. Oh, whoa! Ooh. Those those things. But this is still two turns late. Yeah, it's a bit late, but still. To so kill the five four. Yeah. Or how? Well. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our Jesus be with you, mate. Ah, but that's not too bad. It gets uh, it gets rid of the not bigger. Not too shabby. End. Yeah. The shabbiness is small with this one. And Void Caller gets found for Kalento. How much damage is that? 5, 6, 7, 11 damage. 7, you 11? Put 7. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess you play Implosion second time. Yeah, you take your time here, I think. There's no rush yet. Or you do... Uh, you sacrifice the Imps into the Knife Juggler. Then kill... No, uh, what about this? F PO one of the Imps. Kill the... Uh, in gang boss, in gang boss. Okay. kill the one one with your second one one. Oh my goodness! To be honest, I would have used the power welding for then that. Then go face with a five four. Yeah. yeah, I think I would have done something similar as well. Lento with a really huge board. That was the void color. Yeah, and, and suddenly it's, it's like it's good, but maybe not good enough. Like, it's just a tiny bit hard to use. <laughs> oh, never mind that. Maybe he doesn't play Void Caller then. It Do you ever it not play you Void Caller? You have to implosion here. Because yeah, you have to. There's, there's no choice. The problem is that Imp Gang boss is going to go to town, those one ones. <clears throat> but still not, not, uh, not a bad spot to be in. Because if Colento will not trade... I guess he will trade with the one ones into the one ones. But if he doesn't do that, then Melgan is just... A winning play. Yeah, next turn you're just gonna be... You buff those demons and, and you just trade away yeah. everything and you win. So I guess... Oh, he was four. Wow, he hits four times. I guess you trade for the one, one of the one ones, just to not give a suspicion. Yeah, that you're going full... Ma oh, God. Okay, never mind. <laughs> so that was the telegraph. It yeah. said, I'm about to play Malganis. Okay, so there's definitely gonna be a full trade from Kalento, I think.
In this situation when he went face, yes. Definitely. I would say so. Yeah. Well. If Kalento doesn't trade here, he's going to be punished way too hard. I would be surprised if he ever made a mistake. No, he has to trade everything. He there's knows no too way, much yeah. about this deck. Like, there's a lot of variants of Zoo, right? Some of them do run a lot of late, late game demons, and some of them don't, but. Those that Pio, do here. That doesn't help you. at all. What uh, Void Caller PO into Malganus. No, that's yeah, that's <laughs> <laughs> that would be the best yeah. play ever. Not only you get 50 50 to get the Doomguard, but also you can play the Melganis just right out of your hand. Of course, yeah, but that's probably the best play, right? Yeah. You just void call a PO. It's, I mean, pure skill. So do you ever just void call and pass? Because you can't even sacrifice it, really. So you life tap first? Wait, what about void caller? You don't even life tap. You void call? Then you pass, then you get hit in the face for whatever amount. Mm -hmm. Then you play PO on your Void Caller. Play. Never mind, you're still wrecked. No, there's nothing. I don't even. Yeah, you have to play the Void Caller here, and that's it. This is such a horrible feeling. 4, 6, 7, 11. Very close to the lethal. Actually, with PO, with Imp Gang Boss and Juggler. Wait, what? Like with Power of Whelming and the Juggler, when the Void Caller dies. Oh, yeah, right. He summons the Imp Gang boss. Could that ever change anything? It's like but one that's more still damage. So, one, one yeah. mi missing damage. I, Maybe I don't two think off. that's a good thing to do. And you have no option to sacrifice the Void Caller this turn, so you have to taunt it up. So, the Defender of Argus top was really crucial. Yeah, that Defender of Argus is going to be what maybe allows Strike to stabilize. It's not looking good either way, to be honest, but there's always a chance. He has to get the Malganis from the Void Core, because that's the o only way to win yeah. this game. And I don't even know how... And there's only a 50-50% chance to do that. Yeah. Well, he can add... No, never mind. That's no help. I guess you have to Defender your own abusive. Your, yeah, as a 3-2. But then you're still dead. We know he's dead, but... No, no, unless no, Malganis does come out of the Void. Right? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He has to get the 50-50 from the Void Core to get the Melganis, mm -hmm. then it, then Colento has to trade everything into Melganis first. So you kind of build your board, and you have the Doomguard next turn, so it doesn't feel so bad. Yeah, you have maybe a chance of And winning. you still have two Void uh, Walkers in your deck. Right. No, there's... Uh, yeah, I think we only saw Colento play them. Yeah. So right. Well, there's a chance that Strifecore gets this, but it's going to come down to a lucky Void Caller. If you play Malganis right now, then we know that this is the end of the game. He has to get it... Oh, wow. I am beyond like made. this is. You, you Actually, can't how does he even trade? I mean, he's trying to get a defender on it. You, you can't and he discard loses defender, it. and you can't discard Malganis. This is... No, you have it if you PO. Wow, that was really weird, you know? But he gets it if he power whelms. And he's just gonna punch face for over 9,000. No, he's not punching face. I'm disappointed. No, okay. No over 9,000. So it's 5, 7, 8. Still lethal. Still lethal. No, one off. Oh, now lethal. Yeah. Hmm. I was gonna say it's one off with a void caller, but now it's not. Wow. Things have changed. That was a really nice play by Strife Girl, uh, spotting it. I just don't think. I think the payout was really a, a big gamble. So. I feel I would still play it with Defender of Argus into 50 50 Void Caller. Void Caller yeah. with the uh, Malganus. Instead of discarding it 50 50. No, it was. Your it two was pieces. Left. It was like 66 or three cards left. Uh, like he would have. If he would have left. If he, if he would been have left with Defender of Argus and Malganus. It would have been better, yeah. It would be, it would be perfect. Yeah. But with, with that was really a, sli a slim chance of happening. The odds of that working were slim, but I mean, I don't know what his follow-up was. Like, based on what you know of Zudex, when you're that far behind, and Malganis is not even going to stick on the board, it's mm -hmm. typically really hard to come back anyway. Yeah, but so Malganis trades for the whole board. Yeah, so they would have so taken bad. away everything but the 1-1. One, one. So you, then you need to find the Void Walkers, as you said. Yeah. That could have been a win, but unfortunately for... Uh, you know, Strife Crow, that's not going to work. Kalento's going to be up 1-0. His Warlock's locked out, so he's got access to Druid, Priest, and his Warrior, Grim Patron, probably. Um, and Strife Crow still has a Zoo deck, so 
I don't know. Still has a zoo deck, so this will probably get him a win. Then he has a Paladin. Sometime. Versus Druid, yeah. Paladin against Druid should be very good. Against Warrior, I think it's really awful. Yeah, I was going to say, against Grim Patron, Warrior, things have changed. Uh, this is no longer the Control Warrior, where Paladin was great, but against Grim Patron, you, you get punished yeah. really, really heavily, really fast. So. Really fast. Like, your you only have a, an answer with Equality Consecration. That's basically it. That's, that's your, your best answer. That's your answer to Grim Patrons, because otherwise your knife jugglers are awful. They will spawn more Grim Patrons than they will normally. How does the warrior play this, though, generally speaking? Um, does he just, like, wait on the one ones? So Glento is going to play warrior next, up against Strife Crows. Well, then we'll see. Yeah. Right? Warrior against, oh, warrior against Warlock, so never yeah. mind. How do you play that? Against, against Warlock? Yeah. Against Zoo? Uh, most of the time you win it by combing out on your opponent's minions to gain board control. And let them deal with it? Yeah. And then they can't because they can, have, they can't deal yeah. with it because uh, you're still ahead of the board. So the nightmare is when the opponents try, like when you're the zoo player and you implosion a grim patron and it hits for two? Yeah. That's the that's nightmare. <laughs> and then the grim patrons are going into the, into the imps and Yeah, then they're getting even more people and like, again yeah. and again. That's, that's the, uh, <laughs> that's the dream for the Warrior, though. For yeah. um, I think it's generally a, a good matchup for the Warrior. What the Warrior Even wants AOE is, is weapons first, yeah. then the Commander into Patron. Yeah. That's it. Because, although, well, it's Task a late time play, but you, you have the weapons for a long time to hold you yeah. alive. I would say that you can, uh, when you're mulliganing for, against Zoo, and you know it's Zoo, right? So you mulligan away Taskmasters, you mulligan away Inner Rages, you mulligan away. Um, Echolize of Pain, because most of the time they will die to a flame imp uh, anyway. 3-2, yeah. And then you mulligan away also loot hoarders, maybe? Yeah, you because they're generally not going to trade even into Void Walker. Yeah. And you're so be the only thing you want to get in your opening hand is, um, is Fear War Axes and Deaths, the Death Spites. Armor Smiths, maybe, if you're armor playing Smith them, but maybe, even then, yeah, yeah. I still If you have the Armor Smith, then you can keep the Taskmaster right. or the Inner Rage. Yeah. So it's going to be Warlock versus Warrior, Strifecore versus Kalento. I, I really want to see what Kalento brought. He might have brought Control Warrior. So again, yeah. if you guys want to make a uh, pledge of allegiance to one of the two factions, Horde or Alliance, do so using hashtag KPL Alliance or KPL Horde, depending on your preference. I'm Alliance. He's I'm Horde. Horde. So pick your, pick, your, uh, pick your poison, I guess, at that point. Pick so your poison? It's not, ne like it's negative. not negative, right? Yeah, right. Like, it's not supposed to. But like, if they pick you, then it's uh, bad, right? Uh, okay. I'm the rogue player here. With yeah, the rogue poison. player. So, again, like I wanna, I've not played enough um, against Handlock as a Grim Patron. I know it's pretty bad, but against Zoo, it's really good. So you have like a polarized. It, is it really good say, or is it just okay? I would say it's okayish. It's not good. It feels like you kind of better against the Zoo if you have the weapons in your opening hand. You're awful when you don't have the weapons, right? Like the old warrior decks that like control yeah, warrior like without you're weapons. Being just you just get blown out. Yeah. You're just being overrun by those small pesky yeah. minions. No brawl. Yeah. And it feels like you're the single dwarf in Moria and all the <laughs> goblins are like, oh! <laughs> <laughs> the guy running away from all the, the little imps. Yeah. Uh, and there comes Balrog in front of Doomguard. Yeah, Doomguard. He's like, oh. This sucks. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is the perfect analogy. I don't know if you worked on that one. But that was just a great, uh, great image. I can already imagine that. Um, so we'll see if Kalento brought Grim Patron. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, he, he did bring he, he Grim did. Patron, <laughs> but if if Strifecore brought Grim Patron as well, because yeah. um, I I don't necessarily pin him on playing that deck, but everybody pretty much says it's the best deck in the meta game. But well, I'm not like I usually watch streams of other pro, player, pro players and. I rarely do watch Strife for those because he's in different time zones. Yeah. So sometimes I, I just get a glimpse of it. And yesterday I was an example playing the Control Paladin. Uh, I mean, Midrange Paladin on, on stream. So I don't know if he plays Patron like, at all. No, at we'll all. have to see. Well, sea Giant, uh, okay. So this is this version. It's really interesting to see the cards from the expert pack being used that were no, normally not used in Zoo at all. Yeah. Those were gone. Yeah. Those, like a lot of those giant? were gone. Where did you see a giant? There's no giant. A sea giant. Where, where did, did you see, see a... See a where did you see a sea giant? I didn't see any. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> In the mountain. <laughs> 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 Under the Moria. Oh, man. 
Well, That's the weapons the were works. there. Kalento's got a really good hand here to handle Zoo. Yeah, and 2-4 with the Gnomish Inventor is just so good. If you have the Fear War X, yeah. then Frothing Berserker is just insane. Because it's a 3 mana 3-4. Free so it has guarantee, uh, guaranteed trades against almost anything on board from yeah. Zoo, unless it's an imp gang boss. Which is probably the only thing that you're worried about, but that yeah. can be dealt with later on with yeah. something like an AoE. So Usually so you're okay with this. Colento has a really great opening draw in this situation. All right, it's Tribe Crow. He has the obvious M Gang boss out. He's got a second one in the back end, but Colento picks up an Emperor for later. That could be very important, but honestly, mm. how important do you think it is against Zoo? It's always important, but. It's always important, but not so important against Zoo, I would say. Unless you have the combo in your hand, so yeah. Wars and Commander Patron. And you can actually use it on turn seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you can get it out like right, like yeah. right away. That's a pretty big winning play. So now you drop the second M Gang boss, I guess. Right. It gets tricky though, because what if he pops one, then whirlwinds all the games and hits you in the face for seventeen thousand eight hundred? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> seventeen thousand is my go-to exaggerated number. I, I guess you just. Risk it and play the second in game boss. It's quite mm, unfortunate he didn't have, um, he doesn't have the defensive Argus yet. Yeah, that would be big for next turn. Ah, he might find it, there's always a chance. In worst case scenario, he's got two in gang boss on the board. What if Kalento had double whirlwind in a rage in a rage? That would be nuts. Now you switch the weapon, right? I you think have you have to. to do it now, yeah. yeah. Otherwise, so you kill the weapon. Really I mean, you, you destroy your weapon. You play the death spite. You trade for the M gang boss. Then your your fourteen berserker goes into one one, and this way your fourteen berserker has four attacks, so it can trade for the second M gang boss. Yeah, but that's probably the best play. I don't think there's any argument here. Like getting the one one attacked into it, like it leaves you vulnerable to stuff that doesn't even get played anymore. Um, and even if he does buff the attack, it doesn't matter at all. Like. So hmm. the juggler might have to be. I mean, 50, how 50 do you, juggler? What do you what do you think about juggler plus a minion and then trade and hope that either of those ones work? It's just so unfortunate because it's there's a twice. death bite ready, right? Yeah, I know, but it's so bad. You have to get rid of that floating berserker, I guess. Like, what are the options? So, so you go with the egg. So you go knife juggler, egg, and trade. Is I don't see any other option, but if both of them miss, what's next? Then you're, you're... You're out of the game, right? Like, this yeah, is so I, I painful. Guess so. If, if those knives miss... Uh-oh. Step one. Are we about to witness a skill <laughs> everyone, stone moment? Yeah, get everybody out of hold here. your breath. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is really scary. This is really Well, you scary. can play the Haunted Creeper. Yeah, because it'll pop after the... And at least if the one ones die, then at least they will pop the... Well, he can't attack with the Death Spite. Like the, yeah, the throwing is 7 1. Unless he wants to lose it. Oops! Oh my goodness. Uh, Battle Rage? I guess so. Or. Battle Rage? I, I like Gnomish a little bit, to be honest. Like, you can actually trade it away into the juggler. Like, you trade away your frothing, maybe. Because if, if you let the juggler live, you lose. No, so I, I think if you want to play Gnomish, yeah. you go face with the uh, with the Throating Berserker. And the weapon you on the juggler, right? Yeah, and the weapon on the juggler, and then you play um, Gnomish Inventor. But yeah. I would like him to see uh, I would like him to see play Battle Rage here instead. And then see what what's going what on. What if, if he, he has gets a commanding like, like, shout? That's one of the possibilities. Oh my goodness. Uh, but if he gets like an Alkalite of Pain, he can actually play it next turn. Yeah. I mean this turn. So, uh, uh, does that, does that change things a bit? Do you play the turn differently now that you have this? Because mm. suddenly your Korean patron next turn can be enabled with Whirlwind and your Death Bite, and things look very different from that perspective. He trades with the. I'm, uh, I'm a little berserker. surprised by that, to be so honest. So he values mm. free damage more yeah. for both sides, right? Because you deal free damage to your opponent, but you also get free damage more. Maybe it makes sense. And he keeps, yeah, yeah, yeah that definitely makes sense. With the green sense, it makes so much sense. Because he just draws the, I'm not, 
I'm not sure what they're even talking about. No, no, with the like green when patron, draw, that just yeah. changes everything. That's yeah. the one play that changes it all. Mm. That's not way too dramatic. But. Yeah. Next thing, just play green patron and ruined, and you get four minions on board. Yeah, this is the point where Zoo has to trade everything away. Now, the question is, yeah, I was going to say, like, there's no real argument to be made to play Emperor here, ever, right? Yeah. Never an argument. The problem with that play is that the Ruined spawns the 4-4, but that when you have 4 minions on board, I don't think that's an yeah, issue. Yeah, you're killing everything but the 4-4, four four, yeah. so you don't really mind too much. And now Strive Crow has a... Uh, Everyone, get in here! I mean, no Hellfire, no win, I'm going to say here, as, uh, as dull as that might sound. Unless he punches FaZe really hard and really fast. <laughs> Not like Maywater. No. So how do you play this? If you go Direwolf. No, you can't. Are you insane? <laughs> you can't do that. <laughs> Yo, you can't. Direwolf PO face. That's, and you just hope that you get... It's nine. <laughs> and then you, you hope... I don't know for what. You hope for the second Doomguard? So N I think you go PO Doomguard then if you do that. Oh, what? He doesn't want to lose it. He's going to punch face for nine. End of story. Mm. That's a really short story. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't even tap. No, you can't. But next turn, maybe you can. Oh, he's trading. Down yeah. goes the patron. One and two. That's not bad. Like as a warrior, I think you're like okay. I guess Whatever. I win. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I win. I execute the doom guard. I yeah. kill the Nerubian and play Emperor. That's it. Yeah. Very easy. Seems like point. um. Pretty poor turn, I would say. I would say, yeah, definitely. I think this is the one of the best turn you could have hoped for. And now the warlock is like left without almost nothing. He has no outs. I'm gonna say it right now. Like there There's is no, no way, no for way he can win, right? Yeah, I don't see any way. That's even worse. But. Hmm. All right. So you're saying is the flame yeah, it sounds the flame imp so it doesn't do its battle cry again. Like, that's horrible. You don't even care about the thousand. Yeah, Kalento's got zero things to worry about. Like, when I say zero, I think I really mean zero. So you can trade with the Emperor and then Battle Rage. So you can get more value from the Emperor. Yeah. Because, you know, why not? I think at this point they're just going through the motions, but... We'll see exactly. You can play whatever. Makes <laughs> no difference. Twisting Nether. <laughs> okay, maybe uh, Twisting Nether would make would a difference. So but when there's a six mana Gromesh, a yeah. two mana <laughs> Froding Berserker, and you're tapping every turn, yeah, and, and you get a Flame Imp, I, I guess you're dead. He should have <laughs> silenced it. If he silenced the first <laughs> Flame Imp, I think he would have been fine. <laughs> the second one would have come out. Um, 2-0 for Colento. That's again another possible blowout. That's another unexpected turn of events. I yeah. have to say, so far in these uh, playoffs, things have gone very wrong for one of the two parties. Yeah, but Striker still has the zoo, and it, yeah. I guess he will use it again, right? I mean, there is Priest and Druid left for Colento. And so I have I guess to say, Druid okay. is generally not... Yeah, like Zoo versus Druid is good. Versus mm -hmm. Priest, I think it's weak. Um, especially with the way Colento's deck is built and the way he pilots it. I'd say, generally speaking, Kalento will take it as pretty. He has Pyromancers, and he has Okanides. Yeah, he does. So against Zoo, he's uh, going to be more than fine. Strive Crow is going to be picking up Warrior, and Kalento is going to be taking Druid, which is a bit weird, um, the matchup now that Grim Patron's out. It still depends on what kind of Warrior it is. Yeah. If it's a Contra Warrior, then yeah. it's usually favored for the Druid. By if it's a Patron margin. Warrior, I would say it's, it's even. Like, you can go for the same kind of play you just did against the zoo. Just drop Grim Patron, turn 5, or turn 6. Well, it's pretty, I, think it's, I think it's a pretty good matchup uh, for the warrior. Just because, as you said, you know, you play one turn with four Grim Patrons, and the druid has no way. He has to, to raft one yeah. Grim Patron. Keeper one, keep hero her power one. the other. It's just such a dreadful uh, situation to be stuck in as a druid player. Definitely. Yeah. Swipe is dead. Against those specific boards. You have to use swipe before the Grim Patron hits the board. Yeah. So you have to get value out of the swipe like at any time of the game. When you can just play it, you play it for the value. 
So you, what you could do, I guess, with swipe on turn eight, let's say it comes out with Warsong Commander and somehow they spawn a few. So um, Azure Drake, I would guess, is yeah. the only option, viable option with a really with good swipe. swipe yeah. Pretty much. Uh, that's the best it's going to get. So we're going to be getting to the game very shortly. So it's going to be War versus Druid. I hope we see more Grim Patrons being played. Um, I guess so. Because I, I really do like Grim Patron archetype. I'm really happy slam. it's out. But slam. Sorry. Yeah, I like the Grim Patron a lot too. How long before he gets old? I guess two weeks. Okay. So two weeks before we see whether or not there's counterplay to it. But look at Colento's hand. That's really solid. A weapon removal, a wild growth in the shade of Nax with the coin. Curve. Like, you want to talk about curving. I guess you can even not coin out the wild growth. You don't worry about being fast. Yeah, I don't think he's going to... You can just play wild growth in two, then... The uh, faster you get the shade out, but there's no brawl, so it's no, never no, no, going to die, No, no, there's no brawl. Right? Yeah. Like, I feel in this situation, in this matchup, you can just leave the shade on board till you win. And that's it. Unless, of course, you have to trade because there's like two armor smith on board. Yeah, I keep thinking, though, because this is a pretty favorite matchup in my head for the Warrior. I don't think so, like, after seeing this well, draw. After this hand, yeah, I think this is definitely not the, the hand. And there's the Savage Roar, okay, so half of the combo already in hand. Yep. So I guess you, you play the Wild Grove next turn, and if there will be a weapon from, Colen uh, from Strife Crow... Yeah, you could have gone for Harrison Jones at that yeah. point. Well, he disagrees. Yeah. Wants to play... Shed the maximum one turn, uh, one turn earlier. Before the double whirlwind? <laughs> Maybe, but, Maybe that's if you, it, but if I think you it's push your opponent yeah. for double whirlwind so early... You're ahead. You're ahead, yeah, yeah. by far. The Strife Crow going for the Fiery War Axe, potentially. Yeah, and the Fiery War Axe makes sense, because now, when you saw the Wild Grove, and it might be like, innervate, let's say, whatever, right? Anything, yeah, innervate whatever. That's, then you can cool. have the slam attack option. He finds another weapon. No, that's kind of unfortunate because yeah. he just played the first weapon. But on the other hand, it's kind of fortunate because uh, the Harrison Jones will most likely destroy the Fairy War Axe. Which, I, I guess in this matchup, you might want to hold it for Deathbite. You might want to just like yeah. reduce it, like, the value that you get from the Fairy Potential might War Axe. Might make sense. You're yeah. right. And the Druid of the Claw will be used most of the time as a removal for the Frozen Berserker. Yeah. Unless there's a swipe, so, you know. Yeah, I'm a little... Uh, you have to trade into the Palted Shredder. These are the kinds of, like, the sorts of really weird decisions that the Grim Patient Warrior has to make. Yeah. Those yeah, are really is, weird decisions. This, this is, is why I like to play the deck. Yeah. It's really, sometimes it's really complicated and unintuitive. It feels like Freeze Mage sometimes. Oh, oh man! Colento! I feel like his luck today is just beyond measure. Yeah, I think uh, God Lento really applies here. So I guess you charge that. Where shall I he uses shade, why? Like, I feel this is the matchup when you actually can leave the shade, delay the forever. shade, whatever. Does he know it's Grim Patron? Maybe not. Maybe yeah. that's it. Yeah. But then again, that's, it's so weird. You know what? That's when you think about uh, the players that are, that are directly into the semifinals. Yeah. I mean, see the directly into the semifinals. That's another uh, another huge huge advantage over the qualifiers. The quarterfinals. Yeah, the quarterfinals they get finals, information. You know, first of all, you have just w won a game without playing, and second of all, you know all the decks. Like all of them. You've seen them all in conquest, yeah. so they had to go through every yeah. uh, unlike maybe the counter pick. Uh, the last year was standing. Sometimes you could win with one deck and nobody mm -hmm, had info. Mm -hmm. But in a case like this one, definitely not uh, not the same. Slam the shade. Oh. No, probably oh. gonna go for the inner rage play. Okay. I guess he doesn't value the shade. If there's a swipe from Kalento here, there's a sludge belcher, so that's not that's a good enough, problem. right? Well, just now we can just charge the minion too. But I guess Sludge Belcher might be better. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, he doesn't play silences. That's the one quote-unquote weakness of the deck. It's got no silences. You put on a Sludge Belcher, they have to deal with it with over like three turns. Or, <laughs> or two just turns one. Sometimes. Yeah, and then Green Patron. <laughs> yeah. 
This, if the slime lives at this point, the game is not a big deal because Grim Patron is not remotely out. Yep. But and we didn't see Emperor yet. But Kalento with the wild growth. I mean, again, an amazing start for Druid. I guess I will just play the Belcher and go face. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm a boring you, player. Then you like leave that. the Fronting Berserker on one HP, mm -hmm. which is kind of crucial. You deny the Wurren's value for, yeah. for the Fronting Berserker. Until Rampage, but there's no Rampage. Yeah, there's no Rampage. That's kind of unfortunate. It's only played in the Worgen, right? Yeah. The, for the extra damage. Oh, he goes for the trait, I assume. Yeah. So he doesn't want to risk it. He's still so far ahead in this game, though. Strife Crow, no execute in sight. There's the Patron, but that doesn't change much. Yeah, he's gonna have to death by this and probably play the Armorsmith. It's fine that he can't use the Dustmaster on the mini bot. You, you buffed it. You buffed the, uh, the attack yeah, of it and you don't even. You give your opponent it. a big game hunter on board. I never looked at it that way, but yeah. And there's the Harrison Jones. Value. Because what Kalento was waiting patron. for. Wow. There was no better value because denying that AoE effect on Grim Patron Warrior is the best thing. It's really do. important. It's yeah. crucial. I'm curious though, how important would like would ooze be playable in a metagame like this? It kills hunters' weapons mm -hmm. and it deals with the uh, the warrior's weapons while being a bit quicker on the trigger. I feel like Harrison Jones. It's, it's just better. way more valuable yeah. against Grim Patrons than Contra Warriors. It's like so good against Grim Patrons. Yeah, of course. It's gonna do you a lot, a lot more good. I think Strife Crow is out of this again. Wow. Another blowout. 3 0 again, possibly. There's no execute to, you know. Maybe you can battle rage into an execute. And. I mean. Oh, he's going all in, but there's that's not gonna work. Yeah, that's not gonna work. That's it. That's it. 3 0 for Kalento. So, Kalento. last match. Last game, sorry. There's a priest left for Kalento. Priest against Hunter, Paladin, Warlock, Warlock and Warrior. Warrior. Yeah. I, it feels like it's okay. Priest can do well. Yeah. Like, if, if anything, Priest can at least win one game. The Zoo deck is gonna be the. Like, if he goes through everything, then at least the Zoo deck. Is gonna be a fairly relevant match, I think. Yeah, well, yeah. that was actually sad to watch. Yeah, seeing the wild growth start and just Strive Crow sitting there and taking a beating, like there's nothing he can do because he really couldn't do anything after the shade start. So, yeah, a little unfortunate. We're gonna be moving on to the fourth game. It's gonna be Priest versus uh, one of Strive Crow's deck. We don't know yet which one. In the meantime, I'd like to remind you that if you wanna win card packs in the chat, exclamation mark, pack, packs. Just type it however packs, you want. Packs. Exclamation um, mark packs. Yeah, it, or pack, whatever. Both work for the, the purpose of this. You can get yourself some of the card packs that were uh, given away. We have 500 to give away, possibly more if all of them get, you know, given to people. Um, so yeah, give it a shot. It's worth it. You know, get a golden alloc here. And f don't forget to thanks Kingwin for that. Yeah. After we win. If you get golden alloc here, send a, a tweet. We'll get it there. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Just go. It will um, be shown on screen for sure. And there's the alliance. Oh, the, the I'm losing the fight by like 4%. You're 52, I'm 48. Yeah. And by the way, Colento's Horde. Okay, so I guess, I guess you take it. Yeah. His Life Coach so. Alliance or Horde? Um, Don't say horde. he's Horde because I'm losing this horde. fight. Oh, horde. come because on, man. Colento was in the other group. No, wait. Wasn't he in the same group as Strife Crow? I, I think he wasn't. No, they're, they're not in the same group, so you're right. He's on Horde. Yeah, oh, so Life Coach on. is also Horde. So I need to get. A show needs to win. Is Show even Alliance? <laughs> I think yes, he is. I, I think, think he is. Yeah, I think so. Show is my alliance. only hope, yes. essentially, past this point, is for Show to get to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this is not working. This is absolutely not working. So we're still waiting on Strife Crow's next deck um, against Priest. What do you think he'll start with? Uh, I guess Strife Crow is like really into game design, so he knows it doesn't really make a difference for him. And at the end, at the end, yeah. uh, I don't think he. He mm, he puts a much much of a value on psychological effects. Like right. if he goes like now free free, it doesn't really make a difference. For Kalento, who's yeah. just gonna play normally anyway. Yeah. So yeah. he just want to go maybe with the least uh, viable win rate deck against Priest to just win maybe win the game and then move and on then to move forward matchups. to the better matchups. Yeah, I get it. 
Um, I mean, either way, it's going to be an uphill battle. Like, yeah. we had so far in this tournament, uh, in the playoffs, we've had... It happened last time, 4-0. Uh, that was, like, a complete blowout. And the yeah. last deck you pick, like, when there's tiebreaker, it matters a lot because it comes down to getting those extra points. Yeah. But in the playoffs, it's already over. Like, yeah, it's like single eliminations. Do that or do that. Yeah, pick, and pick your poison. Life or death. Yeah. yeah. So... Sarafko is going to be picking up Warrior versus the Priest. Warrior against Priest. So we know it's a Grim Patron. Yeah, we and do know Grim that. Patron against Priest. I think it's fine. Like, the Alcanai Circle is the only thing that really worries you. And mm -hmm. the Grim Patron can very often sit back until he gets his combo and OTK. That's true. Yeah. What about Talnos Holy Nova? You know what? <laughs> that was, like, I think this is the kind of stuff that Xixo <laughs> pulls out, right? He puts Talnos in every deck. Okay. Xixo has, like, I don't know what it is. He, he put it in Warlock a few times. Um, I've seen him play it in Grim Patron with the Whirlwinds. I, I um, the favor the Lusor instead. But like. he plays Blood Mage for the extra bit of spell damage sometimes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and the card draw is as good as Loot Hoarder. So it was kind of interesting. So maybe if Colento took a lesson from Xixo, it's going to be Blood Mage, Holy Nova. <laughs> <laughs> really hoping we'll that one see. is there. That's a quite, quite a good opening hand, I would say, for Strive Girl. I would keep... Everything apart from the whirlwind. Maybe Grim Patron. I would definitely keep Death Spite and the Slam. Yeah, definitely. Like those, those are keeps. I agree with that. I think uh, Slam is... Like, if it's not amazing, it's at least card cycle. Yeah, if and you need that, that in that type, that type of deck. Yeah. I might mulligan away Grim Patron. If, like, the thing is, like, against Priest, you have your win condition already there. So, so he kept the Death Spite and the Grim Patron. He didn't agree on the Slam. Yeah, but I don't know what he got instead. Maybe he kept it. Maybe the spectator mode is telling us lies. I have no idea. We'll see if spectator mode lies. Uh, I don't know. Strike Coast is gone. Oh, no. He no, did he mulligan it away. He did, however, get another whirlwind. Did he get the whirlwind the second time? Or did he just... Yeah, uh, I think that's the, the, old, the, the new one. Okay. This is, uh, quite he mulliganed it away and got it back. Yeah. Pyromancer is quite good when there's no fear war eggs. And when there's no Grim Patron. <laughs> Yep. Oh, oh well. look at that! <laughs> Speaking of the devil... Well, I guess you play it anyway. Yeah, why not? Not really a big decision to make here. Free minions. So, next turn, if you don't see a minion, you attack face anyway because you want to play the Death Spider in the Tinderfall, I guess? Probably, yeah. Unless you don't want to telegraph it, which I guess I could understand, but... Um, nah. There's more value in probably just going face with it. Colento can heal your, his opponent to get a 1-2 minion. Actually, he could, yeah. But how much... No, he wouldn't... He's at 27, so he wouldn't summon it. Oh, yeah, right. Have to oh, be no, 26 right. To yes, do it. yes. Uh, as you can see, I didn't play 20 games of Priest. Yeah, you don't like it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. Well, it's fine because once upon a time, r like, Anduin had a viable deck. And with the Undertakers. Yeah. And that's the only... I think that's the only time when I actually played a lot of Priest. It felt good to play. Now it yeah. feels very wonky, like, if you play it at all. Um, but it's not unplayable. It's just very gimmicky. True. Uh, I remember the days when Amaz was the only Priest player with Zetalot, but... Well, Zetalot was way later than Amaz. Yeah. He's still the only guy who only plays Priest, pretty much. It's kind of weird that he doesn't play tournaments, right? Yeah, I'm, I, I guess maybe the amount of classes he has to play. Um, feels weird. Yeah, it does feel weird. Yeah. All right, well, Colento does find a Northshire Cleric. It's not safe from Death's Bite. It's not, but you need the card draw, and yeah. how can you win against the Grim Patron? Honestly, as I said, I, I don't know. It's a really good matchup. Like, control decks tend to be easier to handle as Grim, um, unless they're handlock-like, when they can turn the tide right away. Mm -hmm. you, uh, most of the time, you won't be able to steal the Frozen Berserker because it will be buffed above two. Yeah. So even Shrink Monster won't help it. Yeah, and like, once the Grim Patrons come down, it's, mm -hmm. it's really Shadow tough. Like, pain. you have to use Shadow Madness as the best way for do, to do it. Yeah, that, that's true. By the way, Shadow Madness on Grim Patterns is insane. Yeah, it is. It's the best way in Priest to handle it. Yeah. The it's, really if, it's not the only one. Imagine if you have two Shadow Madness, and then you, you steal the 
Warzone Commander and you steal the Grim Patron, Grim Patron. Oh my God. and then you trade into something with one or two attack and oh get a goodness. Grim Patron with charge and then you trade again and like do do do. You have your whole whole board. So Thief Priest. Thief Priest. Yes. Thief Priest, okay, yeah, I get it. That's a very popular archetype. Yeah. At kinda. rank 25, up to like <laughs> rank 17, you have Thief Priest everywhere. Uh, Strife Crow could get a really good Grim Patron board. I don't think he, want to play, he wants to play Grim Patron unless uh, he has guaranteed damage from it. Yeah. Because the Alcanide Circle is too threatening, I would guess. Yeah, and oddly enough, Strife Crow has, I don't want to say no card draw, but almost. Like, for him to win this, he has to find draws very fast. Yep. An Acolyte of Pain would be the best. This is not it. Yeah, definitely not. Oh, Colento is wondering. Colento is also lacking card draw. Colento's entire game plan revolves around waiting until <laughs> Strife Crew makes a move and then he can react. So, what about Shadow Wood Pain, the Armor Smith? And don't play anything? Do you need to? I guess it reduces the amount of like health difference that you're creating when damage is dealt with AoE, so. I guess you're right. There could be a good argument for that. As when you play Belcher, yeah, it just dies the weapon. It generates so much armor, and it generates even more armor because the double armor smooth will trade with the one-two slime. So Strive Pro is going to be able to keep his stuff. Kalento is not killing anything. That's a great turn. Um, this is truly a resident sleeper matchup. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Grim Patron. It's almost as boring as Control Warrior versus <laughs> Priest. <laughs> it's almost there, but that's because I blame the Priest. Yeah, yeah. I blame, I blame the, the Priest because too. he's the only one who's just sitting there like. He what? played one card. Yeah. No, two, sorry. Three, three. Because <laughs> the no key. Shark Cleric and the Powered Shield. And the Power and, Master. Yeah, exactly. The Wild Power that got taken out. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a thing. Whenever I see those two players play against each other, it tends to be like very long, drawn-out games. So this feels a lot more like what I remember from them when they played <laughs> against one another. Yeah. Forehead. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hmm. Taskmaster. So he kind of wants to bait out the clear. Yeah. And it's, it's a really nice idea. Because yeah. once the... First day we clears out of the way. Well, that's a quite a good draw. You drop it instantly, I would say. I mean, he has a death by it. Do you really? Well, you can. Okay. You you get the value from it. You won't get more value out of it. Like there's no yeah, chance right. you will get more value because when when the when there will be patrons on board, you are you are already dead. Nova, Shadow Word Pain wipes the board with the ghoul, right? Oh, yeah, right. I didn't think about that. Yeah, you're right. That's way better. Never mind me. Well, like, Strife Pro gets 17,000 armor. 800. 800 armor. Yeah, that's a lot of armor. And now my question is, how does Clinto go through that at any no point? No idea. It's so difficult. Wow. Kalento killing everything just before Bow Rage is drawn. That That's was clutch. Yeah. Well, uh, do you get an ear? You can still draw four. You can drop the Grim Patch. I would do that right now. Grim Patch, the Whirlwind, Battle Attack rage. Phase, Battle Rage, and you draw two, three cards. Yeah. I would puke this on the board instantly. Oh, man, you're so disgusting. Puke. <laughs> Dance game. There's an abomination on board. Or Sludge Belcher. Or Sludge Belchers, yeah. That's not Necrosomass, man. We don't puke here. That's not the board. I'm sorry. I am going to gently play my cards <laughs> on this beautiful game board. So he draws three cards off this, which... They, the three cards are good, but what's good is the board. Like, yep. on its own. And there's oh, no... Oh, she's gonna steal yet. one. <laughs> with Shrinkmeister Cabal. It kind of does help. I want to. I want to. I want to believe. You have to do it because you have no other options. Yeah, I want to believe in this. This has to happen. 
If Strive Crow draws a Warson Commander, this is end. This is the end of the game. <laughs> well, not yet. It well, is. Okay, yes. Oh, <laughs> oh the draw. Warson the with draw. Throbbing Berserker. Good game, ladies and gents. It's like, how, how much damage <laughs> is that? That's Infinite. Like it's 800. Don't even count. Over 800 even. Yeah, I stopped counting when four I saw three green seven, pictures. Four, seven, <laughs> plus, <laughs> plus oh, uh, two, so that's nine. Then it's 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27 damage. Yeah, I told you. The wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Uh, a little, a little 24 more. damage. Right? Because little, you yeah. have no more space on board. So that's 40, You're at seven minutes max damage. because of the frothing. Yeah. I mean, that's good. Yeah, I think that's default. No. What? Oh, maybe it's not. How come it's not? Maybe we're dumb. No, 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 that's, that's lethal. You get nine. Plus six. Plus, plus 15, plus a billion from frothing. Did, did we just miscalculate? No, wait, wait, wait. You, you drop the Wilson Commander, so you have four minions on board. You drop the frothing Berserker, and you get two patrons. So yeah, it's three less. So 21? it's 21, but oh my God. you still leave your opponent at free life. Unable to handle Grim Patrons, yeah. Yeah, so... It's okay, we just, we just missed Lethal by not calculating right. Like, we overstated Lethal. Grim That's Patron true. math is actually pretty... Yeah, I would lose the game. Well, maybe not, but... <laughs> I, I think you would still win. Yeah, overall, I, think, I think so. You'd be close to, close to it. But now there's a chance that Kalento can do Wait, this. it was five? Actually, seven. Kalento can wipe the board. Like, the, the Grim Patron will not reproduce. <laughs> 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 I, this is probably not the wording I was looking for, but it seems appropriate. In the light, um, suddenly, I don't like this. If he plays Circle, it's because he thought his opponent would have played Warsong last turn if he had it. Probably, yes. Yeah. Oh god, he thought his opponent had Warsong last turn and he would have played it. Well, Kalento's gonna take that, right? I mean, Strife Crow's gonna take this one. Yeah, now it's lethal for sure, right? Yeah. As I said, Grim Patient Math. <laughs> oh, I just want people to get in here, I don't really care how many of them do. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot even calculate past a certain point. They need to speed up the frothing. You think so? Yeah, they, they, like, this is going to drive me crazy. If I have to wait for two sludge belchers to die while the frothing is triggering, <laughs> I think I'll quit. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might just quit the game. Right then and there. Oh, look, a second, <laughs> second wave. Hey, look at all those people getting in here. Who are they? It's crazy. <laughs> oh. And the frothing has like 800 damage. What, 9,000? 22. Not good enough. Ding. OTK. All right, so, so I got my dose of Grim Patient Warrior. Like, I'm happy. I that, guess that was almost unwinnable for the Priest player. It's, it's almost unwinnable, yeah. yeah. It's really difficult. Uh, they have no way to be proactive about damage. The only way they win this is when they get um, injured Blade Master with Circle, and nobody, like, the warrior can't remove it at all. For the and has game. no card draw. Exactly, uh, nothing. After that. Just, like, so full whiff. But, I mean, the odds of that happening is, yeah. Uh, quite low, I yeah. would say. Very, very low. I still think that the Priest is the weak spot of Colentus lineup. Maybe it is, yeah. but it's been working for him in the league. Oddly enough, oddly enough, it's been working pretty well. We'll have to see with the next um, game for Striker. Like okay. he, he is going back into the game. If Three he can one. reverse sweep, that's gonna be crazy because he's got like the, the Kalento's got four games to play with Priest. One of them yeah. is Zoo, which is usually pretty okay for the Priest. Um, one of them is mid range Hunter. That's usually a toss up, but with Harrison Jones for Priest, that also makes it a bit easier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. On Kalento. Yep. So to say well, that. Well, we don't Priest know if that's win. a mid range hunter. I, I, I kind of assume Shrivko plays that kind of deck. But I'd, I'd be wrong, right? A lot of people have surprised me with just bringing face no matter what. I guess it might be uh, the face hunter anyway. Yeah. So and SM Orc is pretty solid. SM Orc is pretty solid against yeah. Priest, definitely. It's actually pretty insane because until, like, unless they get the perfect North Shadow start, you have about four things.
temporal losses that are possible um, against Face Hunter as free. So apparently Strafco is going to be opting for Warlock. You usually mm -hmm. are able to. Yeah, that's There's true. a lot of good targets, right? So the players are currently preparing Warlock versus Priest. There's no Light Bomb. It's just Holy Nova, Wild Pyro plays. Holy Nova, what? Well, Pyromancer might be still very important. Even with the with the introduction of um, Ingang Ingang Boss yeah. and um, Hunted Creepers, Pyromancer is still very powerful. Yeah. Uh, but the problem for Zoo is like if they don't kill their opponents ten five, then if they don't have a big lead. It's yeah, done. It's really hard yeah. to pull off. Uh, I mean, it's really hard to pull off the win because then Cabal Shadow Priest takes your Gang bosses, takes your X, takes your Defensive Argus X, takes yeah. your whatever, even Defensive Argus whatever. Yeah, once the priest gets to the point where he's actually able to react, it's over. Like if he, just a good turn four wild pyro for a priest can be game winning. And if the zoo can't come back from that, like without soul fire, it's pretty tough. Like they have to the implosion, yep. and then they could get a really easy second wild pyro or belcher, um, which True. makes things a bit difficult. So we're getting to the game as we speak. Priest versus zoo from Strive Crow. And the priest opening hand is bad. I would keep Nova and probably Shrink Meister just for the body. I, I think you have to fish for the Pyromancer and. So you don't even keep Nova yeah, even against Zoo? Yeah. Maybe it's the not Nova good enough anymore. It's not enough. Two damage is not enough, dude. Yeah. The game has changed a lot since yeah. I played Priest and really... Oh, wow. Well, that's okay, I would yeah, say. Yeah, that's okay. I... Well, you can keep the coin. I was thinking about playing two. Because then you kind of ruin your opponent of... I really like... Anything. Like, those double North Shires are great. You can heal eggs, you can heal... Anything you can, like mm -hmm, just mm -hmm. whatever you can find to heal. Get card draw, find those answers, double Cabal. And this is just insane for Kalento. Feels like a really good game. <laughs> yeah, I think Kalento is going to get a really sick start here. What about if you, if, if Strike will play that Hunted Creeper and he will, do you like second not share into coin and heal? No, no I, I do, yeah. No but mind. then now again, you're, playing, you're not playing around abusive is the only issue. Yeah, I guess at this point, do you want? I think you still want to draw two cards. Yeah, it's I too think easy. so. Like you can keep the power hold shield for the pyromancer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the best uh, best card to power to power shield in this matchup. Shadow Man. Oh now. my this is, God! This is the win card also yeah. against Zoo. Thank you for that aim gang, boss. I still love when <laughs> someone actually did that to me. He Shadow Madness the egg. Really? Just with straight a, up? With a, with a buff. That's a great play. Yeah. yeah Thumbs mind up. control for four mana. Thumbs up, man. And now Circle of Healing. Oh, wow. Shadow of Pain. Colento with the draws. I, I think you just kill both 1-1s one and Shadow of Pain and that's it. I might power shield, but yeah. It's definitely you an incredible draw. W what, do you, what, do you, what, are, what are you fearing? Yeah, at this point, I just want the card draw. Not really fearing anything. That might change his plans, would it? No, not really. Never nah. Played. It's still too good to pass. Yeah, you still use the Shadow Ward Pain. It's just so good. Yeah, you have Shadow Madness on the back end. You got turn five locked down with Wild Pyro, Thought Steel if needed, and then six. Six and onwards is just you having fun with yep. the Zoo player. Yep. Two Cabal Shadow Priests will seal the deal. Yep, as they say. So you have two turns when you have to deal with the board, and then you deal with the board by stealing it. Oh, he goes for the draw, okay. So he really, really just wants to get as many cards as he can to handle Zoo's draw. Oh, goodness. Um, I guess he wants to get the uh, Shadow Madness value next turn. RMB Cowl is surprisingly strong here. So you Owl did 1-5, trade for it? Yeah, and then you check for uh, the egg, I guess. But then again, you have no enablers, so maybe Flame Imp is a bit better. I think the Flame Imp will be better here, but the problem is that there's Shadow Madness, and the Shadow Madness will work with the Nav Juggler into whatever creature. And he can still play... Oh, no, that's unfortunate. Okay, wait. Is there, is there something awesome? 
That's the big question you have to ask when you're playing as a as a Well, wild you can Paro, play Shadow Wild Pyro with Circle. Or no, Shadow Word Pen on the Juggler, maybe. Or unless you want nah. Shadow Madness. The, I think I like Shadow Madness. Yeah. It's so simple and very straightforward. Very elegant. Yeah. It's an elegant solution to a very simple problem. Like top 2 plus 2 equals 1. Oh, oh wow. Look at... <laughs> that Let me change boss. your mind. <laughs> Still one turn. But I feel like Sraker will just ignore the board next turn. Yeah, Kalento will definitely not do anything and just take it later. Yeah. Unless he Shadow Word paints. Yeah, Shadow Word. Yeah, he can Shadow Word paint yeah. it. No, he will. He will use the Shadow Word paint on the Flame Imp, I guess. Yeah, that's it. I think so. It, the problem is, does he fear um, Defend of Argus? Would Shrink Meister like it would be good on turn eight, but right now it, it feels risky. Yeah. So uh, maybe he does consider three, six, nine, ten cards. So if you draw, if you drop the Shadow Bird Ward Pain and Fall Steel, you will still overdraw by one. There's a bit of a honestly, yeah. There, this is a bit of a tricky spot, as you said. The Fen of Argus changes the dynamic of mm -hmm. how this turn is going to be played, because if it gets, if it buffs anything on the board, well, you can still uh, steal the egg. Yeah, if it doesn't get defended, uh, stealing the egg is not bad. bad. But yeah, I would say you can ignore the Fen of Argus. If the egg would be buffed, because of you need the, the egg bu uh, buffed to 1 3. If it's a 0 2, it's almost irrelevant. For you, yeah, it does very little. Uh, Thought steals for 2 cards and only finds the 1. No, he fold steal for 1. Yeah, exactly. Which I find. The reason was. So he to doesn't not want to himself. overdraw. Yeah, okay. Yeah, logic. Do you just pop your egg? Because Doomguard? Oh, I wow. think I do, yeah. I just popped my egg. No, never mind. You're just playing into Wild Pyro too easily. Yeah. You're just going to play Dr. Balance later on. 10 7 Dr. Balance. That's Shadow War Death for it. And Pyromancer, so I feel like that's handled. Yeah. He's popping the egg. All right. Kalento's going to have a field day on this board. And a fall. Wow. That doesn't really matter. Yeah, Kalento's just going to have oh, fun. Oh, look. A powered shield. Why not? Priests just want to have fun. Pyromancer, Power Shield, and Thought Steel. I guess. I, mean, I don't even know. Does it matter? Hey, it might matter. Yeah. Wow, that's so powerful. Pre Welcome to Priest versus. Wow, okay, and the interesting thing is that Kalento has the answer to a Dr. Boom if it does come out. So he has to trade and play Dr. Boom, right? You can't let that guy live, yeah. I mm. don't think there's any argument for that. Like, if he were close enough to lethal, he might consider it, but since he's so far away... Um, you know, we, we were talking about that, right? If, he, if on turn 5 his lead is not massive, it's usually going to be a win for the Priest. Yeah, and Priest has now 10 cards in his hand. He doesn't even care if he, like, overdraws. Yeah, and he's got way too many options, and they're all really good at handling the board. Yeah. The Fen of Argus from the zoo makes this even easier. So, you can play... Shadow Ward, well, Pyromancer Shadow Ward Death seems like the. I like the egg with it. So because yeah. of the, like mm -hmm. the, pop, the chance to pop the uh, 4 4. That's true. That's yeah. very clever. And let's see where the bombs go. Pyromancer and bombs. They're so pretty nice. It's that's not too pretty bad, nice. Right? Yeah, it's not bad at all. That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. not bad at all. Oh, wait. Let's just look at Strive Close Hand. So he has to tap. I think nothing will help him in his hand at the moment. And playing Doomguard is like a really high risk, but you have to try it. I mean, even if you play Malganus, does it even guarantee to win, right? Maybe not. Well, there's no, there's no answer to Malganus, so maybe at the it's moment, not so bad. Yeah. But you might think there is. Yeah. Like, Shadow Ward Death is definitely a possibility. Although, if you know your opponent's deck, maybe you're not playing around that too much. And the Malganus is wow. kept in the hand. Strive Crow with the perfect... Discard. Yeah, this is just uh, exactly Light what I was looking for. Still no, um, still no, Alcanizo okay, Priest. Yeah, that, that could be very important for him. I like this. That really defend like of this. Argus is going to be... Abuse of Surgeon and Defend of Argus is really a great play. The, like low value minions that you suddenly make relevant. Yeah. I feel like I'm playing Zoo. That's a really great, uh, great play by Kalento here. This is a bit annoying, though. Like for so now, if you drop the Melganus, it, it doesn't achieve Doomguard. much. Well, you don't lose the Doomguard. 
But at least, and you even keep Malganus probably. Hmm. I guess that's got to be the reasoning. Yeah. He saw two Pyromancers, he saw one Death, um, Shadow of Death. So I guess you just play Sylvanas, kill the 7 2. Yeah. Show. All day. I have no time for games. All day. What a troublesome board. Yeah. You don't even use Circle of Healing here, whatever. It just doesn't make a difference. Not really. And, like, Strife Crow almost has to flood the board to make sure he doesn't get punished, but it does nothing. Ah, there's a chance there's Nurbin Egg. Well, then again, how does he even handle this? Like, this so if he plays, he has to play, he has to play Void Walker and Abuse of Sergeant and, and the Egg. Yeah, and everything. So he has to drop everything. Yeah. And Colento has Cabal Shadow Priest, so he can steal one of the options to get Balganis, right? Yeah, and then reduce the chances that he gets crap. Mm -hmm. um, Wait. Actually, never mind that. Never mind, yes. Never mind. Yeah. So now we can kill Malganus. Everything gets debuffed to 1 3 and 3 4, right? What if you. Well, you can. You can actually steal it, can't you? Yeah, you can. You yeah. can play. Uh, you can steal the egg. You can kill the 3 5. And. Well, you can still Void Caller. Yeah, you could steal the Void Caller, but I don't know if you really want to. It's going to take a few turns, too. It's not really worth it. I think just playing the straight up Shadow or Death. Yeah, it seems is, like a better option. Yeah. You kill everything anyway. And you're still winning. Like, it and doesn't you, you can. You can steal the egg still, so. That's like GG. Yep, typical Priest versus Warlock. When the Priest gets a good start, it's uh, almost impossible to stop it. There's no way I'm winning that. Priest yeah. is that. 30 HP. Yeah. Full HP. At the end of the game. 800. Yeah, there is absolutely no way there for Strife Crow to take the game. So Kalento is going to seal the match going 4 1. 4 1. Second time, right? Strife Crow. For the day? Yeah. The first match he played today um, against his opponent Firebat, he went 4 1, I believe. And then 4 1 again against Strife against Crow. Strife Crow. And that against his teammate. Yeah. And against one of the best players in the world. Team Has kill. to feel good. Yeah, I mean, Kalento is... Kalento is, at this point, I think, one of the most widely recognized strong players in Hearthstone. Like, no argument be made about that. Yeah. And um, winning so convincingly, like, just proves how strong he is. Like, it's just crazy. And Strife Crow is also amazing. Like, it is, it, that's the thing, is the players that are here at the moment, Kalento versus Strife Crow, whoever won was going to feel good about it. Kalento has been very consistent. There was no underdog. There right. was no situation when there would be an upset. Right. That those both players can be... Easily, easily champions of this event. Uh, of this event, no surprise. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even be like I'd be totally expecting it. If going into the the league, you told me which are the players that have the current best record, I'd say I have to say you know, um, oddly enough, life coach, strife coach, Kalento are three yeah. of the best ones. So yeah. definitely something there. So, what? I mean, I don't know, Kalento moving on to the finals. That's true, guaranteed, guaranteed. Um, and now, we will see the, sem the second semifinal, which is life coach against show. Life coach, your teammate. So I guess you're rooting for him, but yeah, I'll, I will be objective as usual when yeah. it comes to casting. Of course, when you see the plays, you'll still be objective about it. But yeah. uh, he's close. Like there's he's a really possibly close. if, if really he beats close. Show and he goes to the finals and beats Colento, then that's a really hot year for Life Coach at this point. If he doesn't yeah, go for that, definitely that would be like definitely. the hottest year uh, ever for a card player. So I guess uh, we're gonna be taking a short break, and we'll be back in about ten minutes for a ninety minutes match. Ninth, yeah, life coach should be <laughs> roping for a lot. Also, don't forget about uh, you know the hashtag KPL Alliance, hashtag uh, KPL Horde, depending on who you want to vote. I know you have a little bit of an edge, like 4% ahead of me. I'm 48 with Alliance. Um, buying the bullet for you and your teammates Horde, so I'm, I'm giving it to you. But um, Colentus Horde. And I have to vote for show. You know, he was on Complexity. Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. But, uh, until recently, he was <laughs> on Complexity. <laughs> and then he went to Team Liquid. Too so bad for all you. The, all the best luck for show, mm -hmm. hopefully in his next match. That being said, we're going for a short break, and then, uh, yeah, don't go anywhere.